welcome to another video as well as part three of our series on how to break your Garmin Phoenix 5X. No, how to balance strength and endurance training and become hybrid AF. That's what we're all after, isn't it? That's why we're here. So we're going to touch on that. This is part three of a four part series. Part one covered my hybrid training plan at the moment and why we've put it together that way. Part two has covered managing stresses and maximizing efficiency by considering them in the broader context of your training week. Part three is gonna cover specificity and prioritization. Part four is going to cover why less might well be more and why you could be doing too much volume. So before we go any further, if you enjoyed the video at any stage, do remember to hit like, comment down below and hit subscribe. Any questions as we go on any of the videos, do drop them down below but nine times out of 10, the question we often get, the answer might well be, it depends. So hopefully these videos will help give a bit more context to your situation, but do please ask us any questions and we'll do our best to get back to you in as much detail as we can. I'm Fergus Crawley, this is my YouTube channel, so you might know who I am, but if not, welcome. I would like to profess to being hybrid AF. I have squatted 500 pounds and ran a sub five minute mile on the same day. And then a year on from that, I total 1200 pounds as well as a sub 12 Ironman in the same day, as well as 100 milers, 11 days ascending and descending the same mountain, sort of 18 minute, 26, 5K. It's just, I like to do a lot of things all at once and I enjoy doing it. And that's why I train the way I do really. This is Johnny Payne, my coach of almost four or five years, who's gonna introduce himself. I am Johnny Payne and I have been his coach for quite some time. And uh, as well as claiming to be hybrid as F, uh, this will give you a little bit of insight into how we manage that for Fergus, where I sit in this and, and how I manage it for myself and therefore how we can manage it for you. 18 odd years experience uh, putting these kind of uh, programming plans together uh, and uh, alongside Fergus at Omnia, we, we're doing it for you and for anybody who wants. That's that really. So yeah, if you want more context on us as individuals on everything that's led to this point, then please head back to video number one, where we give you all of that. As this is a series, there's no point in doing it every single video. And at this point, this intro is probably already too long. So let's move on. What we're going to be doing today is talking through the importance of prioritization and specificity as a whole. And we're going to be using the framework of general physical, I'm very in the way here, general physical preparedness to sports specific preparedness and why actually most of the time where we sit, where most For those that don't know, GPP is basically a term that came out of Soviet Russia, whereby in off-season sports athletes would play things like basketball, go hunting, just go on easy runs, just do more things that they did as kids, basically. That's why kids are quite malleable and can play a lot of sports, because they're doing a lot of things at once. So this is where skill acquisition, general energy system development is really important, why you can become quite developed up to a certain point across a range of things. Moving all the way over to the other end of the scale is very sport specific demand. So if you are a 5k road runner, then this means that you probably drop off all of the things you'd be doing on a general GPP basis and focusing solely on making your 5k quicker. What we do is we sit somewhere in the middle where we're always trying to develop ourselves across energy systems with the ability to specialize towards an event or a race, PBs that we're chasing, or for more experienced athletes, any sort of, they can sit a little bit further here. So the sport specific stuff becomes a bit more relevant to those that have been training for X amount of years because they can maybe hold on to some of the general physical stuff they've developed over time. Like to use myself as an example, I know that my squat will probably never really drop below 180 unless I take six months off and lose a whole load of weight. Whole load of weight. And that's because I've been squatting for almost 11, 12 years now. So this is why this is a really important consideration and something that's often overlooked when balancing strength and endurance training program. And a lot of the questions we get is where do you start? So we're hoping we're gonna address that for you today. Apologies if it doesn't give you the programming that you want as part of how we make a living, but also it's completely context dependent on the information that you give us, the context that we have and how that is all pieced together as part of the broader context that we discussed in the previous video. So do you wanna just run through to consider the broader considerations here from GPP to SSP purposes? Yeah, it's, it's very simple. As Fergus said before, general is general, general physical preparedness. Uh, in actual fact, the, the, the Russian model is, uh, is based on what they do with children. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's, it's like you would do with, you know, you're referring to it being uh, the things that you would do as you're a child. They start then, you know, and they consider, it's a useful explanation actually. If you consider that in the, in the Russian model, uh, from a sports perspective, from a national sports perspective, 
they're looking at how kids perform. So they're looking at you know where might Fergus of eight to ten year old uh, perform if we start specialising him at some point. It would have been competitive eating at that point, by the way. <laughs> so they're not going to do that with kids, and, and the Russians aren't going to do that either. But what they're going to do is have them attend to general stuff. So they're going to be playing lots of different sports. They're going to be running, jumping, throwing, swimming, things that make their bodies move efficiently in lots and lots of different ways without specialising at all. Once they've built that base and they have that base, they can then be looked at from an anatomical perspective, anthropometric, easy for you to say, with one tooth missing perspective, and considered uh, how, how, you know, okay, let's look at the frame that, that Fergus has and decide where we're going to sit him if he decides to be a sports specialist. And over time, they're going to move towards this. Uh, we'll come back to this, but over time, they're also, uh, within a good training program, in our opinion, you'll move back and forward between the two and, and, and relay these kind of foundational skills. Uh, so essentially, uh, beginners uh, adding new disciplines and off-season decompression and we could consider this to be kind of during a time of, of, of a layoff. So going back to that Russian, uh, you all know about uh, the powerlifting, uh, the Russians like a, a term, I don't know if it's used anymore, called softening. So you do uh, three quarters of a mi macro cycle will be very sport specific towards a very, very specific end. And then when that stops, it's not just a case of taking a couple of weeks off and deloading and going back again. They'll take time off and go right back over here, play football, water polo, run about the forest, whatever it might be and actually just learn to have their bodies move without the pressure of specificity. Uh, and we kind of try and employ that within our, with our programming as well. So over time, as these foundations have been laid, as the different uh, uh, anaerobic, aerobic, and, and physical different adaptions have been, have been uh, put in place, we're then going to take athletes who have a very specific goal, something like maybe a triathlon or something, and this is where we have to consider, okay, now we have to be specific. We have to consider the modalities within that example. We have to consider biking, running, swimming as very, very key features of programming. So we're going to take a little bit of the emphasis off this, and we're going to aim it a little bit more towards this. So this is the most of the time we're doing both those things. Fergus says, I want to do a triathlon. As Fergus, as you know, will say, I want to do X, and we have to rethink the model again. So I want to do X, do a triathlon, do an ultramarathon, do something like that, and now we have to be specific, and so we aim towards that. Or even going back to your current situation where you're doing a lot of things at once, we have, you have, also added the goal of wanting to, to PB your squat. I'm sitting about here be yeah. because I'm about 12 years deep, but that means that there's only so long I can try and hyper-specialize in several disciplines at once before I start to massively tail off yeah. on all of them. And when I do, that's where I'll scale back to here and re-specialize for something else. So after the outlaw, though, we sat back a little bit. Yeah. We made sure to employ About five weeks. Five yeah, weeks so, so sitting around there, yeah. Relatively general physical uh, uh, conditioning. Uh, we considered that in the offing we had probably more um, uh, triathlon-based things that we wanted to do with you. And you have thrown uh, a 250 kilo squat in the air. So actually, we've wow. taken ourselves exactly. We've taken ourselves from here and pushed back, back towards a certain amount of specificity. But at any point, should we see any reason to do it? Should you have a layoff? Should you want to? We'll edge back this way and make sure that we're just shoring up those kind of details. And that's, that's basic strength and conditioning. Pretty it? much, yeah. yeah. Let's use let's use three examples here for the sake of trying to be as general and inclusive as we can. We will use the example of a complete beginner who's somebody that's just new to training entirely and likes the idea of kind of running because their mates do it, like the idea of lifting because it might get them into a bit more shape and it's just something they can practice over time and develop that across the board. That's why I fell in love with training because it was simple metrics to track over time. We might have somebody that wants to just begin as a hybrid. Fantastic. We'll have somebody in the middle, let's say, let's say a powerlifter who's come from being powerlifting dominant and thinks, you know what, I don't like being out of breath going up the stairs. <laughs> I've been there myself, it's not that fun. I was strong, but oh, the amount of Mars bars was horrifying. But let's say that they just want to improve their overall aerobic base, they want to lose a little bit of weight, but they want to get fitter doing it as well as holding on to as much strength as possible. And then let's take somebody who's come from a strength background, move more towards an endurance base, wants to go sub town on the Ironman, but kind of likes lifting once a week. So they'll acknowledge that the lifting won't be completely optimal, but they want to do a little bit just for the sake of their sanity and head because they enjoy it. All three examples are equally valuable in and of their own right, but we've got to treat them all very differently. So for a beginner, the way that we approach things and the things to be considered are that general physical preparedness is the best place for them to start because skill development, energy system development are all things that are new to them, so their base will be here. Whereas example two's base might be here because that strength base, that skill base over time, that can be translated into more of an overall base and then 
player three, we'll call them, will be way, way higher because they've been doing a lot of endurance training as well as a background in strength sports. So we're working at three different tiers here. But the beginner has to climb that ladder up to a point where their base reaches a sustainable level. And then once they get to this point, they can start to maybe decide what do I enjoy more? What can I start to specialize in? And then they'll get to about here and then we can start to add in some more specific elements to get them to about here. And then we can start to really dial down what are they responding well to, what do they recover well from, et cetera, et cetera, and start to move forward. And this is the harsh reality whereby you can't go from being a complete beginner to being really strong and doing triathlons at the same time because you don't have the base. And it's, it's not that glamorous. This is just doing the basics well. We're not going to sell you some mad methodology where you do the single-legged kettlebell, BOSU ball, split squats on a balcony in Puerto Rico. But... We are going to sell you to doing the basics well over time and increasing your base and knowing that maintenance is very important and acknowledging that your goals need to change over time. So example number one is like that. Example number two, a powerlifter has a strength base, but they might be lacking an aerobic base. So what would we do? We'd strip them back to some simple powerlifting movements, reduce the assistance volume so there's less junk volume, as it could be called, and then slowly bring up their aerobic base over time. That might be six weeks, that might be eight weeks, it might be six months, because then we get them to a place here where the aerobic work's helping their recovery overall, they can start to work in some anaerobic work, which is more skill demanding, because you've got to run more efficiently, you've got to be able to recover quicker, but then they're probably gonna recover quicker anaerobically because of their strength base and vice versa. So then they can sit here sooner rather than later. And then example number three, again, if they're more endurance focused, they might be sitting here, but they might wanna just scale that back a little bit for a period of time to get their strength, their robustness, their joints, everything ready to go for a real specific push to a sub 10 Ironman for the example that I used earlier. So the summary really is that there's no shortcuts and that you need to be clear in what you want to gain from this. To just be hybrids, to just be fit is fine, but that leaves a lot of doors and windows open for you to just go and do a 45 minute Metcon that tanks you, just go on a long run and then you'll be burnt out and not recovering effectively. You need to know what you want to achieve, you need to know how you want to get there, you need to know what things you want to incorporate, consider them all within the context of the goal itself and then realize, okay, if the strength is not something that I want to focus on specifically, but I want to keep up, make it one session a week, take it back to real bare bones volume so that you've got more room to focus on the goal that let's say is a 10K. And vice versa, if you just want to improve your aerobic base but can just maintain the strength that you've got, you'll just need to reduce the volume a little bit and increase the aerobic base over time. So no one example is the same, but you can only work backwards from the end goal by being specific and prioritizing what you need to get there. You can't just be training like a powerlifter, like a marathon runner, like a triathlete all at once, because the reason that they train the way they do is because they are training in those sports independently. So if your goal is a triathlon, but I enjoy strength training, so I'd like to do a little bit of that, then okay, right, reduce the triathlon volume if it was just done in independence, and then add in a strength session. Okay, but my swimming's pretty simple, so I can't really do many inter much interval work at the moment. Okay, but we don't do any drills, we don't do any intervals, we just focus on time in the pool lens for the time being, and that comes under the GPP bracket. And we build that over time where we can sit as developed in all energy systems and ready to specialize when the time is right. And that might be three months out from event, that might be six months out from event. If you're running 250 miles, it might be even longer, but if you just want to run your first 5K in under 25 minutes, then it might only be a month. You might just need some sort of acclimatization to the movement and go from there. But the point is here, the only way you can get here effectively and recover properly over time, week by week, and keep moving forwards from a training perspective, is if you know what goal you are aiming for. And then you work backwards, prioritize the movement, prioritize the training modality so that you can develop yourself across the board to get to this point. And I feel like I've said a very simple point in a very long, rambly way there. So I'm going to pass over to Johnny to try and make it more succinct. I can try. I can try. Uh, ultimately, the, the, one thing you, you picked up on the end there, which we definitely do and, and, uh, and I think works, whether, whether we're doing it for you, whether you're doing it for you, is, is having a kind of a goal in mind and then reverse engineering that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and work yeah. backwards. So if we consider that we've got, uh, again, let's use Ferg as an example, we've got a, an extreme triathlon up here and some squat goals, but he's come to us as a, as, a, as a client for the first time. Then what we want to do is we want to test where he is specifically for these kind of outcomes and then see where the gaps are. And again, like I said earlier on, this is basic strength and conditioning. So we need to consider, okay, so he wants to PB in squat, 
Uh, but we know his previous PB was 250 kilos, but now he's only producing 180 uh, as, as a maximum squat. So we need to then push that into the program and prioritize that within the program that we described in video one, I believe, uh, and then piece that into the program as, as we want. Again, with the endurance-based components, with the, the, the swim, bike, run, we've got to kind of piece that in there and then work back. Generally, what we're going to find is if we, if we test things here, we test that aerobic base, and we find that the aerobic base is lacking, and there's maybe a strength endurance base lacking, then we're going to look at this athlete, perhaps not Ferguson's a good example, we're going to look at this athlete and say, okay, so we definitely need to start here, and we need to work our way up. Again, if we do look at Ferguson's example, jumping around a little bit, and we consider these points here, we know we actually need to jump down here because we've got best part of 20 years, not 20 years, best part of uh, over a decade training in, in very specific things. So we're not going to have to reteach you how to squat, so we can start here from squat perspective. So all we're doing is looking at what the outcome is, looking at what the specificity is, and then tracking it back in the reverse engineering process and saying, where does that, that athlete fit here? Once we've kind of built this GPP and brought them up to a certain point at which we can specialize, at any point, we can sit back off that. Yeah. So we can always move back and forward within these elements. And we said earlier on that I've been a relatively good example. Maybe you can describe that, but I've been a relatively good example yeah, yeah. of how that works. And I'm, but I'm roughly here at the moment. But I've spent the last four or five months since, well, since Nevis. God, that's longer than that. Way down here yeah. for, for several reasons, but, but down here on purpose, even though I have some very, very specific skills, I haven't worked in. I basically I haven't, skate, I haven't to work skateboarding, it, so. dumbbell pressing, playing around with the kids going on the occasional bash about the hills on the site on a bike as and when you want it but with no real structure which is by definition some sort of playful gpp yeah. but when it comes to doing something a little bit more specialized like the 50k that you had up in fort william you got through it it wasn't ideal because you, had this. you hadn't been doing the more specific trail running to that point but because of this stuff as the foundation and because of this stuff that you've done over a cumulative period of time you're all you but the more work you get on your belt over over your existence the constantly further away you are from the bottom point here and the constantly yeah. further and closer you are to this. So I feel luckily now through the years of training and specificity I've been working on, I'm always pretty close to here in all the disciplines that I now practice. So a couple of months of work building those things back up, I'm always here where I want to be. And it's about being re realistic with goals as well and this is where most people go wrong in the sense that I want to run a really fast 5k and get really strong. Okay, well you need to contextualize that a little bit. You need to run a sub 25 minute 5k and you want to hold on to your 405 pound 108 kilo squat so what are you going to do you're going to go into maintenance mode on the squat volume you're going to make it very squat specific you're going to isolate your weaknesses you're going to add in some front squats because your posterior chain is lacking so you're going to do what you can in a more general sense to keep that squat here and then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed work and increase the specificity for the, of the 5k work so that when it comes to it your 5k is increased because you prioritize that volume and your squats stay the same. You've only got there effectively because you've been specific with the goal in mind. It needs to be realistic, it needs to be tangible, it needs to be something you can move on to take further. I could say, yeah, I want to do a sub 10 Ironman and do a thousand, a thousand kilo super total, but there's no way I'm ever going to do that because that just doesn't speak to itself sort of relevantly. But what I can do is I can set things closer to that along the way. And once I box them off, I can then assess one, how much did I enjoy doing that? Two, what did I learn from that in terms of how I adapt? What did I respond well to? What made me more fatigued, et cetera, et cetera? And what are my weaknesses that are making me this side of the scale when it comes to an aerobic capacity? But maybe what are my strengths that are making me on this side from a strength capacity? So it's about being honest and acknowledging what your goals are, being realistic with them, setting them, and then retrospectively, well, working backwards and, and retrofitting your programming, the roadmap to get you there and the sort of stepping stones that need to get you there. And that's pretty much it really in that sense is we can't, we can't tell you exactly what to do, as I've said. It's just a case of you need to understand this underpins everything that we do. And we've had athletes that have sort of come to us and say, oh, well, I don't know why I'm doing these sessions that other people are doing. And sometimes we might prescribe a session that we know has a fantastic application across purposes to just develop somebody up towards this point. And that isn't really dependent on what their end goals are because we need to get them to a level where we can start to specialize. So base building, it's not a glamorous phrase, but it is an important one. And it's one that we've got to through years and years and years of training. And it always amazes me how I can go off and do something and tank myself for a month or so, like Project Vertical, for example. I came back and squatted 180 for three, having not squatted in six weeks and having barely walked for four. So it's crazy how much you can hold on to because of the work and foundation built up through here. And I think in terms of actual detail and application, that's probably been the least specific video thus far. 
but it's just important to mention how important it is to consider this as the foundation for this, and then the fact that you can't just be sitting here all the time across disciplines. This is where we are most of the time, this is where our clients and athletes are most of the time, and we tend to say that for experienced athletes, people that train, within three months, we can take them from here in the disciplines they're practicing to a specialized event or race at a decent level relative to them in this point. So that just depends on adherence, et cetera, et cetera. But that is how we like to approach things methodologically speaking. And that's another review for part three. Nice. So to summarize, prioritize and work backwards. There we go. That was a short video, wasn't it? But anyway, once again, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have liked the video already. Don't see any reason why you wouldn't have done that was sick comment down below and make sure that you have subscribed we will see you next time for part four on something else something else <laughs>